Hello everyone. So the coming video is going to be about ulcer, their history taking and examination. Now ulcer you get as a short case in most of your surgery exams, prof exams and I know that most of the students find it very difficult to explain an ulcer. However, it's not that difficult and I think after watching my video, it will be very easier for you to examine an ulcer presented as a case and also to diagnose the type of ulcer you are dealing with ok so let's start hello everyone so as you can see in this video we are going to talk about ulcers and how to examine and what are the points that you need to take care of while taking the history of a patient who presents with an ulcer so first of all you need to know what is an ulcer or how will you define it right so an ulcer is defined as a break in continuity so what is it it is a break in continuity of skin or mucous membrane right as you can see here we have a diagram of an ulcer so what you see the skin the continuity of the skin is broken here right and so this lesion will be called an ulcer now when you know that this is an ulcer and a patient is presented with this what are the things you must keep in mind while taking the history of the patient so there are five main points here you need to ask about the mode of onset whether it is a spontaneous or traumatic or any other cause and the duration as with any complaint you need to ask the duration of the complaint you need to ask whether the ulcer is painful or not now that will also give us a clue to the diagnosis that I'll be discussing later next you need to ask about the discharge its quantity its color okay and uh, the fifth and the last point is you must inquire about associated diseases now particularly what diseases are important in the case of an ulcer we shall discuss now so first of all let's talk about the mode of onset now ulcer can present a spontaneous way in a spontaneous way it can be traumatic the traumatic ulcers will generally heal if any other factors are not present that will prevent its healing for example ulcer on a joint may show delayed healing because uh, there is lack of rest on a joint right now, spontaneous ulcers can be malignant ulcers or tuberculosis where there is no inciting factor such as trauma okay that is a thing to be kept in mind now uh, in tuberculosis we know that the, the lymph nodes show first lymph adenitis then they coalesce matted lymph nodes and then they present as also right and then uh, so after the mode of onset you need to know the duration here the important thing is uh, for some uh, ulcers infective ulcers you need to know the incubation period of organisms like uh, for soft sores which is caused by H. Ducri, right? The IP is only three to four days since exposure, while for Hunterian chancre or syphilitic chancre, the IP is about three to four weeks. Okay, so 
you asked about the mode of onset you asked about the duration since when the ulcer is present next what you will inquire about next thing is pain now why do we need to know if there is pain or not which ulcers are painful which are not right so if pain is present it gives us an idea that the ulcer is inflamed acutely so it generally is present in infective ulcers while the malignant ulcer if the pain is absent those point towards malignant ulcers or uh, trophic ulcers syphilitic ulcers now malignant ulcers are generally painless they can be painful it's not that they will never be painful they can be painful if they infiltrate the nerves after you have inquired about the mode of onset the duration the pain you need to know about the discharge whether it's serous purulent or bloody now all this will take you towards the diagnosis of the ulcer right the fifth point which is also very important is associated diseases particularly uh, you must know about uh, tb because tuberculous ulcers can present uh, after matting of lymph nodes you need to know if there is a, if the patient is diabetes diabetic sorry if the patient is diabetic or are there any nervous diseases present like tapes dorsalis transverse myelitis or peripheral neuritis these are the things you must rule out okay so once again let us revise what are the things you ask in history you ask mode of onset you ask the duration you ask whether there is pain or not you ask if discharge is present and if so what's the quality of the discharge and then you need to ask about the associated diseases whether they have tb diabetes or any nervous diseases now after you have taken the basic history of the patient you progress towards general examination of the patient hmm? so we will proceed towards general examination now here what are the things you need to keep in mind nutritional status of the patient very important to know so you must know if the patient is well nourished or malnourished because that will aid in healing of the patient if you want the ulcer to heal faster the nutrition status of the patient should be good you need to know about uh, diseases uh, like syphilis you must search for stigmata of these diseases you must look for tb you must look for lymphadenopathy elsewhere in the body in case you are suspecting a tuberculous ulcer and you must look for uh, signs of atherosclerotic diseases if you are suspecting a case of burgers taking a basic idea of general examination we should proceed towards the local examination of the ulcer so here what what are the things here you do inspection first as in any case and then you proceed towards palpation 
so uh, i'll give a brief idea what are the things you must see when you look the patient with an ulcer what are the things you need to note down on inspection you need to know the size the shape the position and the number number of ulcers whether there is a single ulcer or there are multiple ulcers apart from that you need to know the edge the floor the discharge and apart from these you must look at the surrounding area of the ulcer because in some uh, particular type of ulcers like varicose ulcer you will find eczema and pigmentation that will prove that it is a varicose ulcer and sometimes you need to examine the whole limb in inspection you may find varicosities in case of a varicose vein presenting with an ulcer right so yes and then when you begin to palpate the ulcer you must look for tenderness and you must feel the edge and margin in inspection you just have a look you get a basic idea of the type of edge or the type of floor but here you have to feel the edge and margin of the ulcer you need to palpate the base of the ulcer the depth of the ulcer should be measured okay so you look for tenderness you see the edge margin then you proceed towards base you note down the depth while you you are feeling the floor of the ulcer the base of the ulcer you can see if the ulcer bleeds on touch or not and their relation with the deeper structures whether there is any fixity or not and surrounding skin again should be examined now let me explain in detail what we have exactly to look in each of these subheadings so let's begin first of all we will talk about inspection inspection the first point in inspection that is to be noted is the size and the shape of the ulcer now an ulcer can be oval it can be circular or semi lunar sometimes it can be vertically oval but most of the time the ulcer is generally never a perfect oval or a perfect circular these are a basic estimate i mean overall size you can get oval you will never get a perfect oval very rarely and sometimes the shape is very irregular you cannot define it in any of these like it's oval or circular it may be just an irregular patch right so what are these what why is the shape of ulcer important hmm? why is it important because they point towards some of the diagnosis because if the ulcer is oval you can suspect it to be a tuberculous ulcer now these are not hard and fast rules this is not a 100% thing but these are common things i mean commonly you see if the ulcer is oval it can be tuberculous of course you have to consider every point and then only you will arrive at diagnosis okay so if the ulcer is oval you can suspect it to be tuberculous however tuberculous ulcers can coalesce and present eccentric shape too if the ulcer is semi circular or semi lunar you can suspect it to be syphilitic vertically oval points towards venous ulcer you find it towards medial side of the leg most of the times right and if the shape is very irregular it mostly is a malignant ulcer okay 
and size you need to measure what size of the ulcer is now why do you not uh, need to know the size of the ulcer why is that important size basically will give you an idea if the ulcer will heal quickly or it will heal later because obviously if the ulcer is large in size it will take longer time to heal then apart from size shape you note the down the number right whether it is solitary or multiple ulcers then you need to know the position of the ulcer again position also points towards diagnosis and that's why you need to know like if the ulcer is on the medial side of ankle or leg if the ulcer is on the medial side of ankle or leg you should uh, think it to be a very cool ulcer if the ulcer is on face and particularly above a line joining the tragus and the angle of mouth it is a rodent ulcer because these sites are very specific to present with this kind of ulcer so like if this is the face and this is the ear and this is the mouth sorry for a bad drawing but this is just to explain and you draw a line from the angle of mouth to the tragus of ear and in this area mostly presents with rodent ulcer okay then uh, if the ulcer is in neck axilla or groin where mostly the lymph nodes are involved you must suspect a tuberculous ulcer if it's on external genitalia it uh, should be chancre or soft sore if you find a ulcer on the heel or the ball of the foot it has to be trophic ulcer so after we have uh, known the size shape position and the number of ulcers we should proceed towards having a look at the edge and the flow now what what is an edge and what is the flow of an ulcer let me draw a diagram here Now this is an ulcer where this ulcer where the ulcer meets the normal skin that point is called the margin and the and this is the floor of the ulcer and the the area between the margin and the floor of the ulcer is the edge so this is the edge and this is the floor of the ulcer and the structure over which the ulcer rests forms the base of the ulcer so when we talk about the edge of an ulcer
they can be of uh, various types particularly four main types first is an undermined edge okay this will be known as an undermined edge and this generally you see in tubercular ulcers because the subcutaneous tissue is destroyed faster than the skin and so a uh, tunneling effect you can say or the stenting of the skin over the ulcer that is called undermined edge or undermining of an ulcer then you can get so this is a sloping edge and this is the sign of a healing ulcer a sloping edge is a sign of a healing ulcer now sometimes you can get punched out ulcers i mean the margin will drop at 90 degree with the normal skin and these will be generally associated with trophic ulcers associated with neurological diseases you can see it in diabetic foot or even in leprosy or in any condition where the nervous system is impaired the sensory there is sensory loss okay next type of edge is that with a rolled rolled out and a pearly white beaded edge this is a beaded edge and this type of edge you get in a rodental cell or a basal cell carcinoma this is very typical of a rodental cell i'll be, i will be showing you diagrams of different types of ulcer later in this video and we shall get a better idea of a particular type of ulcers and their presentation okay now next is uh, an ulcer with a rolled out and everted edge and this is sign of a malignant ulcer this is a malignant ulcer now let us talk about the Floor, different types of floor you can expect to see in an ulcer. Hmm. Now, floor is the exposed surface, exposed area of the ulcer that we see, right? Now, what can you see in the floor of an ulcer? You can get red granulation hmm. tissue. which is sign of a healthy ulcer or a healing ulcer and if the granulation tissue is pale and smooth it indicates a slowly healing ulcer a slowly healing ulcer you may get wash leathery slow which is uh, typical of a gummatous ulcer generally seen in syphilis sometimes the ulcer is so deep that you can see bone as the floor of an ulcer and this will happen in cases of trophic ulcer and if you see black mass in the floor of an ulcer you should think it to be malignant melanoma Okay. Now, after you have a, had a look on the size, shape, position, number of ulcer, its edge, its floor, then you should have a look at the type of discharge present. 
from Elsa. Its character, its amount, and its smell. Is scanty, serious discharge. You get enough healing also. Similarly, uh, if uh, you get a purulent discharge, that may also be offensive at times. You should be sure that the ulcer is infected. And a zero sanguinous discharge. Think of tuberculous or malignant also. Now, the importance of discharge also lies whenever you are investigating a type of ulcer, you should send a swab test and uh, for culture and sensitivity so that you can uh, you can give proper antibiotics to the patient that will aid in better healing right and then let's talk about the surrounding area of an ulcer the surroundings If the surroundings is uh, red and edematous, it is acutely inflamed. The ulcer is acutely inflamed. Okay, and uh, sometimes the surrounding area you can see eczema or uh, pigmented. That signifies. Of varicose also. So a quick recap. What are the things you need to see in inspection of an ulcer? You should uh, comment about the size, the shape, the position and number of ulcers present. Then you come to the ulcer. You comment about its margin, you can comment about its edge, the floor, right? The discharge, the discharge, if any, its character, amount, and smell. And then also have a look about the, around the surrounding area and comment on that. So, very simple. You know the size, shape, position number, then you comment about the slope, the edge, the floor of the ulcer and the discharge and also the surrounding area, right? After inspection, we will proceed to palpation. Here, first of all, you see tenderness. This uh, I have explained in the history taking section also. If uh, the ulcer is tender, you should think that it is inflamed or infected. And slight tenderness may also be present in other type of ulcers like TB, syphilis or varicose ulcers. After eliciting tenderness, again you come to palpate the margin, the edge and the base of the ulcer. Once again, let us have a look at the, the diagram that I had previously made also. So if this is an ulcer, this is the margin, this is the edge. This is the floor and 
this is the base of the ulcer while palpating the edge or margin you have to look for indentation whether it is present or not and uh, the base of the ulcer is the the structure on which an ulcer rests you all must know the difference between the floor of an ulcer and the base of an ulcer floor is the exposed surface of the ulcer that we all are seeing while base is where the ulcer rests it can be the underlying bone or muscle right now base is felt when you try to pinch the ulcer between your index finger and thumb now slight indentation may be present in chronic ulcers but if there is marked indentation it signifies a malignant ulcer and then when you have a comment about the base of the ulcer the floor the margin you assess the depth of the ulcer which can be expressed in millimeters so again a quick uh, recap here the things to be noted down in palpation will be tenderness and then whether the edge or the margin is indurated or not the base of the ulcer you should assess the depth of the ulcer and again we should come to the surrounding skin in palpation you should look for loss of any sensation or motor deficit hmm? you should look for loss of sensation or motor deficit particularly if you are thinking you are suspicious that a neurological disease is present hmm then you must also look uh, for any thickening of peripheral nerves which will uh, point towards leprosy if you think the ulcer is due to arterial cause you should palpate the arteries the arteries like if the ulcer is present in leg you must feel for all the arteries like the dorsalis pedis posterior tibial popliteal and femoral as well because this will give you an idea if there is an atherosclerotic disease and if so if there is an stenosis of any of these arteries you may not feel the pulsation very well and another thing is about varicose veins you must look for any varicose veins present if you think the ulcer is a venous ulcer basically you should rule out all these sometimes there can be mixed pathology also sometimes there can be both arterial and venous disease so you should make it a routine whenever you find an ulcer particularly in leg you should look for sensation loss you must feel all the pulses you must look for the venous system whether it's normal or there are varicosities present okay and the next thing is uh, lymph nodes many people forget to palpate the lymph nodes but if you think it to be a malignant ulcer or a tuberculous ulcer you must palpate for the lymph nodes which will give you an idea if the lymph nodes are involved or not because they very well guide the treatment ahead okay so that's all for uh, ulcer that's enough 
So apart from having, again, uh, I would just say that whenever you are dealing with ulcer, apart from looking to the ulcer's margin, base, edge, floor, the surrounding skin and the lymph nodes and other general things like uh, lymph nodes and veins and arteries. So you have to look for veins, arteries and nerves also apart from the local characters of the ulcer and that will complete your examination of the ulcer. So next we will be discussing, I will be presenting a few uh, different types of ulcers and we will be discussing their characters. Okay. Okay. So now as you can see, uh, I have uh, different images showing different types of ulcer. So let us deal each one of them one by one. Okay. Now consider this ulcer. Telling about its uh, size that you have to measure, right? Shape. Shape is almost oval, you may say. Right? And then you go upon margin. Margin, you can very well see. This is heaped up margin. Right? And what do you look, what do you see in the floor? You see, uh, reddish granulation tissue or maybe blood we can't make that out in the image right that uh, will be more appreciated when you see visually and uh, then commenting upon the surrounding skin there is redness you must feel the base right and uh, it may be indurated okay so the point in this that you have to notice heaped up margin and if an ulcer is showing heaped up margin you must have to suspect it to be a malignant ulcer in this case it will be squamous cell carcinoma and this may be blood because generally malignant ulcers bleed on touch okay so this ulcer diagnosis should be a squamous cell carcinoma and why do we say so because of the heaped up margin next let's consider this ulcer I would suggest you all should also pause the video and write down the characters of the ulcer and guess what's the type of the ulcer so that we can correlate later okay okay so what do you see here again sight is important as I had said you can see this ulcer is on the ball of toe and margin is punched out that is 90 degree to the skin okay and floor as you can see it is deep you cannot appreciate what's uh, forming the floor but if you appreciate clearly the depth of the ulcer is greater okay and uh, the shape you can say it's uh, almost circular now uh, here what you have to keep in mind a punch, punched out margin and the side that is the ball of the toe what do these point towards these point towards the presence of a trophic ulcer generally they occur due to loss of sensation and neurological diseases right and therefore they most commonly occur in the foot because uh, when the pe uh, person walks or the foot is the site which is more prone to trauma and because of loss of sensation they can't feel the trauma and with repeated trauma they tend to develop an ulcer okay so next 
let's talk about this one now here again sight is very important the sight as you can see it's the area above the line joining the corner of mouth and the tragus so this sight is very common for broad and set right and as you can very clearly see it has beaded margin again it's not very clear in this diagram but a rod and tulsar at this side generally shows a beaded margin and so this is a rod and tulsar okay this so can you guess what's the ulcer you must see again the site is very specific for the type of ulcer the condition of the surrounding skin these things will give you an indication what type of ulcer this is so if you have guessed it let's see if you have guessed it right or wrong this is a varicose vein ulcer now why because site it's the medial side of ankle and the specific point that almost clinches the diagnosis is the surround the condition of the surrounding skin can you see the deep pigmentation here this is very very much pointing towards the venous ulcer so these are the points these are typical points that clinches the diagnosis of the type of ulcer rest points you have to uh, you have to describe the shape the margin you may describe for every ulcer but there are certain points that will clinch the diagnosis and that is what i'm mentioning here okay now let's see this again here if you can see the site it's axilla I have mentioned what type of ulcers are common in the axilla but if you see the margin can you describe the character of the margin here what's uh, edge you can say it is undermined undermined edge now you may be knowing what I'm pointing towards okay so undermined edge and the site of axilla where generally we get enlarged lymph nodes due to TB so this ulcer is a tuberculous ulcer once again I will recap here a heaped up margin will show that it's a malignant ulcer An ulcer in the foot with punched out edge and uh, the ulcer that is deep is a trophic ulcer. An ulcer that's most commonly found in the face with pearly beaded margin is a rodent ulcer which is a basal cell carcinoma. Again an ulcer on the middle side of the foot with deep pigmentation is a very coarse vein ulcer. And uh, ulcers on axilla or groin or neck with undermined edge denote towards a tubercular ulcer okay